Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to look at the latest news about Apple accepting Bitcoin payments through BitPay, as well as some of the older banks in the US looking to provide custody services for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. If this is the first time you're seeing me on YouTube, consider hitting the subscribe button if you find some value from the video, as well as hitting that like button down below right here. Let's hit that before we get started into the video. Helps the video out in the YouTube algorithm. All right, first thing we're gonna have a look at here is Fear and Greed Index. Extreme Greed, we are sitting at Extreme Greed once again. What does that mean for the space? Essentially, it looks like everyone wants a piece of the pie. So last week was 95, yesterday 93, today, right now, 95. Last month we were sitting a little lower because everyone was scared about that dip that we saw on Bitcoin going from 42K right down to 28,800. What's gonna happen from here? anyone's guess, but it looks like we're going to continue up even if it is slow gains into new all-time highs. Coin market cap shows us sitting at 1.5 trillion. This is coming up in the news agenda quite a lot to say that it's a resistance point. Maybe it's a psychological resistance point, one and a half trillion. But looking at Bitcoin, we are around 900 billion very, very close to that trillion dollar market cap. And you can bet your bottom dollar when we hit that, it's going to make news headlines everywhere. Imagine a $1 trillion market cap Bitcoin. Now, I suspect we will see some sort of pullback from that point. Maybe we sit behind the trillion dollar market cap for some time, we drop from that point. Maybe we shoot straight through it, but I think there'll be a very strong reaction at that point. But further on, I think we will push through that trillion dollar market cap pretty easily, even if it is just a little holding point for some time. Uh, Ethereum, 200 billion and $1,800. We are yet to see a $2,000 Ethereum. We think we're gonna get there through February. Just gotta wait and see what Bitcoin does. We're looking at Apple Pay bringing on Bitcoin as payments using the BitPay services. Now this article is important because we're looking at the volatility of Bitcoin decreasing. Now they're just comparing the volatility of Bitcoin uh, to the 2017 bull market. And currently we are less volatile, which is kind of surprising to a lot of people. But when you look at the swings, looking at the 60 day basis, so the rolling swings on Bitcoin, it is less volatile than it was back in 2017. So we've got the chart down here, historical 60 day volatility. Bitcoin's latest boom is less fraught than 2017 based on 60 day measure. This isn't the best comparison in my opinion because I don't believe we're at the, the top of a bull market. However, this article from Bloomberg is comparing the Bitcoin bull market top in 2017 to our current price. And so the red is the volatility and you can see that we aren't as volatile as we were at that top, but we are similar a little lower actually compared to the mid tops that we saw on Bitcoin when it was hitting around 3000 down here and then when it ranged and moved up to 5000 which was this next volatility point. The last final top slightly after that point where we had the lower dip into 17,000 was the extreme volatility. And so currently we are quite a long way from that point. This is a great sign because it shows we have a lot further to move because Bitcoin has the potential to be a lot more volatile than it currently is. For institutions wanting to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, I believe they are looking at the volatility. I think most of us would agree with that. We've heard it before. It makes sense if you are a big company with billions of dollars to invest into an asset, you don't wanna see it fluctuating heavily like it was doing in 2011, 12, 13, even into 2017, they are very big fluctuations. So with more money coming into the space, we can expect the volatility to drop, which leads me over to the Apple Pay story. and. Apple Pay is now accepting Bitcoin through BitPay. Why would they be doing that now? I think it has something to do with the volatility dropping off, but also there are a lot of other institutions getting into the space and you don't wanna be the last one into the game. Otherwise you risk dropping your reputation to say, well, why weren't you in on the next greatest, biggest technology advancement of our basically our lifetimes. BitPay is also planning to include support for Google Pay and Samsung Pay in the near future. So we could expect to see 
almost every phone accepting or at least being able to pay with cryptocurrency in the very near future. Apple can expect to make a ton of cash in this, just like Square's looking at doing here. To put some numbers around this, Square generates $1.6 billion quarterly in Bitcoin related revenue on an active install base that we estimate to be in the 30 million range, roughly 30 million. Apple's install base is 1.5 billion. And even if we assume only 200 million users would transact, this is 6.66 times larger than Square. For rough numbers, 1.6 billion per quarter multiplied by that 6.66 number that they're using in the article gives Apple a possible 10.65 billion profit per quarter. So then you would then multiply that by four, four quarters in the year possibly giving them around $42.5 billion in extra revenue. That's pretty massive. And the funny thing with that is that they don't even have to produce any more products. All they have to do is enable cryptocurrency payments through BitPay, which is what they're doing here in this article. What does that mean for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space? Obviously, it is more exposure. Even if they're talking about 200 million users using it, at least 1.5 billion that they have on their books already that are users of Apple, most people are going to see this, are going to be able to see that they can pay with Bitcoin. So this is just mega exposure to the cryptocurrency space. Moving on from the massive news that we've seen with Apple and BitPay accepting cryptocurrency payments, this one is for the Aussies. Australian Securities and Investment Commission approves Bitcoin ETF listing on ASX exchange. I think this is pretty huge. We're gonna see an ETF, a Bitcoin ETF, in Australia on our ASX. The Australian Securities Investment Commission has said that it has no issues with Cosmos Bitcoin linked ETF that is set to be listed on the ASX exchange. So this could be the second Bitcoin ETF in the world. I haven't heard of any others apart from Canada being the first in North America to accept a Bitcoin ETF. And now we're seeing an ETF in Australia. Now I could be wrong, there are probably others out there, but these are the two major ones which I've seen which are look, let's say reputable exchanges. Let me know in the comments if you know of other ETFs on other reputable uh, countries exchanges. In another article, Bank of New York Mellon, America's oldest bank has announced plans to hold, transfer and issue Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as an asset manager on behalf of its clients. Now this is exposing Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to an older generation. Now they have 2.2 trillion in assets under management and 41 trillion in assets under custody or administration. So they've announced the decision to hold, transfer and issue Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. This is just more adoption and more of the eyes on cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of big news coming out lately and from what we can see here, personally, I don't think this has been priced into the, the price of Bitcoin just yet. I think we're gonna see the price probably move up a little bit, maybe 50, 60, 70,000. We will need some time to correct. Hopefully we get the correction sooner rather than later because for a healthy market, we want to see some corrections and some time for price just to hold its level and basically gain some stability at a particular price. That is gonna be healthy long-term and then that gives time for institutions, whoever else needs to buy in some time to reassess what they're doing on their books rather than just see the price skyrocket, dump again, and then reassess. So nice stepping stones up to this high would be amazing and that would see a prolonged bull market as opposed to a quick short bull market. If we get a prolonged bull market, that's gonna give us more opportunities for altcoin season and to see these altcoins pop off rather than seeing altcoin season once, twice, maybe three times in a bull market. Potentially, we will see a lot more altcoins pop throughout a, an extended bull market. So ideally, we do wanna see the market come back, hold its level, create a new base, and then begin to move again. Michael Saylor says stampede of corporations are investing in Bitcoin. Like I've just said, I want to see this market take stepping stones to its high. 
Now, in terms of the Stampede, I think it might just be a bit of a headline catcher. I don't think all of the institutions and corporations are going to be investing at the one time. I think they're going to look for opportunities to get into the market. And if they have to, manipulate the news to get a nice dump on. So be aware of any dumps that are coming up. Pay attention to what we're looking at on the channel in terms of our buy levels and what we expect to see for dips. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, join the journey, hit the like button to show your support for the video and so that you can see the videos pop up in your news stream. Michael Saylor goes on to say here uh, that they are looking to acquire more Bitcoin for their business and it's going. Bitcoin's gonna be 100 times bigger than Google or Facebook. Thinking these guys are around seven or eight hundred billion, and uh, Google is in uh, one and a half, two trillion. Call it two trillion, or be there eventually. A hundred times bigger, two trillion, two hundred trillion. That's quite crazy. So when companies like Amazon plugged into the internet, people didn't say, "Are you an internet company or a retail company?" I think they're a technology company who embrace a future. So everyone is eventually going to embrace. They're going to plug in to a digital monetary network, just like everybody eventually plugged into the internet. I tend to agree with this. I can see that going the way of the digital currency, whether it is a decentralized currency like Bitcoin, or of course, a centralized digital currency backed by a government. So one way or another, we are going to be forced into digital money, or we're going to make the decision ourselves to get in on our own digital currency. You may know me as your Hopium Free cryptocurrency channel, but I have some Hopium news right here. Morgan Stanley's $150 billion investment arm considering buying Bitcoin. So just look at these words carefully. According to a Bloomberg report, sources familiar with the matter reveal the investment behemoth is exploring whether the leading crypto asset is the right fit for its investors. So they're basically doing some research. That's a great thing. It's not the it's it's basically not them saying we have bought like Tesla, but they're doing some research into it. This is sort of the hopium boost that we want to see. We want to see 150 billion potentially coming in. But of course, if they're doing a report, this is probably not going to be the entire 150 billion of their investment arm. Maybe it's a small percentage of that coming through. And looking at what Raul Pyle says down here, he's looking at 10 basis points. That's still 5 billion of the total 5 trillion that these guys manage. That's, that's a pretty big chunk of change to come in. That is basically 0.1% of their total assets amongst the US investment advisors community. More great news, PayPal to expand its crypto services offering to the UK. We already know about Bitcoin getting listed on uh, onto PayPal. Now they're looking to expand this into the UK. Hopefully it's gonna to come to Australia as well and your country, wherever you're watching from. And we just are able to use Bitcoin more easily when it comes to our payments. But they better hurry up because obviously Apple is using BitPay to be able to pay for transactions as well. So unless they hurry up and they catch up, then I think people are just gonna be able to use their Apple Pay and they're integrated with BitPay to use your cryptocurrency. So everyone is trying to rush to get on board with being able to accept uh, cryptocurrency payments. Now let's hope that Elon Musk doesn't get investigated by the SEC for his t uh, buying of Bitcoin through Tesla. Basically, the US Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, could investigate Elon Musk over Tesla's 1.5 billion Bitcoin purchase. Some legal experts have warned. Nothing really solid here, just experts are warning. Obviously, if this was to be investigated, then this would put a dampener on institutions coming into the space, other corporations looking to buy Bitcoin until this case has settled. If it, in fact, becomes a case. It's not a case yet. It's just legal experts have warned. Obviously, this would be the test. So we know Elon Musk to test a lot of things. So hopefully he's going to test it, going to win it for us, and then more of the institutions will pile in. This could be a fantastic time if it does go to court. That would be an amazing buy the dip opportunity. I could see that being a very big correction in the Bitcoin market. So that would be a definite buy the by the dip opportunity. Let's keep track of that one along the journey of our cryptocurrency channel here.
Following on from that, US government won't allow corporates to keep replacing dollars with Bitcoin, warns investment advisor. So we're beginning to see some of these news articles just to warn people about the potential of US government trying to somewhat control what corporates can invest in and what they can't. Obviously, they want them to stay in dollars. So if it's moving into Bitcoin, then it's not going to be using their US dollars. So we'll keep track of this as well. This is an important piece because this could really scare the market. But I think overall, the trend is pushing towards cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And so if this does scare the market, we need to be prepared in order to buy that dip. There are always the times that people want to buy, but they're unsure that it is the real buy the dip situation or the end. One last piece on the SEC. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce calls for urgent regulatory clearance as institutions rush to adopt Bitcoin. So obviously we've seen Tesla. Now other institutions are coming in. Corporate, uh, corporations are also trying to come in. So they're trying to now rush for some regulatory clearance to get some ideas around what it is you are able to invest in and how, etc. So again, keeping an eye on that. Let's finish on some more positive news. Top analysts agree that Bitcoin is in an early stage of the bull market. Plan B, who is famously known on Twitter, uh, Plan B compared the current Bitcoin bull run to 2017 and 2013. And based on that, he expects the price to rise to 300,000. Now, you know, on the channel, I mean, I've got my expectation of around $200,000 Bitcoin. Either way, I'm going to be very, very happy. Think about it this way. We're at $50,000. If we get to 200,000, it's four times our money. If we get to 300, it's six times our money. We can get those returns in altcoins, in other altcoins, much riskier and will be quicker. Bitcoin will probably take a lot longer, but the risk is lower. So they're the different things we're weighing up here. And that's if Bitcoin gets to 200 or 300,000. We're still not sure yet, but with the amount of corporations and institutions rushing into the space, it is starting to become more likely that we could reach that six figure sooner rather than later. Finally, let's look at our flippening ratio. We love Ethereum on the channel and this little ratio gang website just shows us the price that Ethereum has to be in order to flip Bitcoin's market cap. Now, this is all just for some fun. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. All you really care about is making some money and then seeing the space grow, or at least I care about seeing the space grow. I'm sure many of you are in that same boat, but for some fun, basically we are here now. Ethereum, 1,777. We should be at least here. This All this is saying is if Ethereum is worth at least half the value of Bitcoin, which means it would put it at 0.0812 of a Bitcoin and 3,880. So I think Ethereum could be and should be at this price here with $4,000 Ethereum doesn't seem that outrageous. It's pretty much doubling from here. So it's not that far away anymore. And in terms of a flippening, obviously we have the dolphin there to show our flippening 7,760. So this is, this is looking pretty good. I want to see this escalate and get us closer to that halfway point to Bitcoin's value. That would be a fantastic opportunity. That would also mean our Bitcoin value would have basically grown a hell of a lot against uh, from us investing in Ethereum, our Bitcoin value has also grown. Lastly, that leads me to SwiftX. You guys know that we have been tracking this on the channel for some time now. Let's have a look at what we have here. We have Bitcoin, Band, Cardano, and some Aussie dollars, which we still need to purchase some other cryptos with. So SwiftX, if you want to know more about this, I've got a link in the description down below. If you sign up, and verify your account, you get $10 of free Bitcoin. What we're gonna look at here, we want to buy some more Bitcoin and some Ethereum, but first I wanna get some Reef. So I wanna show you how to purchase cryptocurrency on this app. Basically, we're gonna look at buying $1,500 of Reef, gives us 27,000. We just look for the asset here, type in how much we want, hit instant buy. There is the fee of how much uh, we have to pay in order to purchase, confirm. And that is now done. Next asset we wanna buy is Ethereum. We wanna put some Ethereum in our portfolio. Ethereum, how much Ethereum do we want? Let's get at least one Ethereum. 23,000, instant buy. Confirm buy, done. And lastly, I want some more Bitcoin in the portfolio because that just makes a nice balanced portfolio. Bitcoin, 62,000 Aussie dollars. So let's put 1,500, make some nice round numbers. Instant buy. Confirm, we basically have 0 0.024 of the Bitcoin. All right, now that's done. 
let's go back and have a look at our pie chart. To do that, we hit dashboard, little three lines up here in dashboard. Now our pie chart's starting to look a little more like a nice solid portfolio. We have 18% of Bitcoin, 16% of Ethereum, ADA at 13, Reef at 10, and Band at 10. We still have 4,500 Aussie dollars to play with, and we'll continue to add to our portfolio throughout this bull market. So stick around on the channel, hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already, bell notification icon, like the video up, let's get it to 1,000 likes. I'll catch you guys at the next video. If you want to join me on Instagram for Q&As daily, check out my Instagram down below. Go follow us and ask your questions over there. I have stories popping up all the time. And if you want to join the Traders Group, our Investor Accelerator, 40% off for a limited time. Link is in the description for that as well. See you over there and I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.